In Northern California, three teenage boys are facing charges of sexual assault in connection with the alleged rape of a 15-year-old girl who later committed suicide. And the story of Audrey Potts is eerily similar to Canadian teen Retea Parsons. And another case still fresh in our minds is the rape trial of two teens in Steubenville, Ohio. The two young men were found guilty of raping a 16-year-old girl at a party. The case gained national attention because of the cell phone pictures, videos, and social media posts surrounding the rape. In the case of San Jose's Audrey Pott, her family says she got drunk at a party, passed out, and was sexually assaulted. The young men who raped her took pictures and circulated them among her high school. Audrey committed suicide. The family of Retea Parsons says she was sexually assaulted, and after photos of the incident were also posted online, she also committed suicide. Could these tragedies have been prevented? 23 ABC's Tiffany Martin looks further into cyberbullying and what can be done to be more responsible on social media. Tiff yeah, Jackie, sites like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are all ways that people keep in contact with their friends and family. But unfortunately, these sites have also been seen more and more often as a way to bully others from afar. No one can take from you what you don't give them. Cyberbullying has become a growing trend amongst teens. What was once a horrible incident that the victim dealt with alone has now become a public humiliation event. When situations like this occur, local school districts say they take the needed measure to put an end to the issue. I guess the most important thing is to try to protect the student and their family and their, and their privacy, especially when something like this happens. At the same time, get the word out in some way, shape or form, whether it be phone calls, assemblies, letters, whatever it might be. Rebecca Irwin is a mother of three, and all of her children use social media and have been taught to use it responsibly. One of our rules was if you wouldn't say it to their face, you shouldn't type it. Some responsible methods also include being friends with only people you know and becoming familiar with safety settings. For girls like Audrey and Retea and many untold others, their pain became too much to handle, and the only solution they saw was suicide. But parents and school officials alike said during these tough times, things can be learned and communication is key. We can learn is to recognize when our kids are being bullied. Um, a lot of times they won't say anything. And this is not a school's problem. This is society's problem and that takes all of us to be there and, and be willing to listen to them. If you or someone you know is being bullied, school officials encourage communication with a friend, a parent, or someone you can trust, and always report any sign of cyberbullying. In the studio, Tiffany Martin, 23, ABC.